All right, well, I, I, uh, I welcome them. We have before us George Goebel, the Carl Roberts, the great punch and duty man, Mark Walker. Professor. <laughs> 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 All right, I'll start out, okay? I'll ask George a question. I have one here. Now, what really motivated you to build a large show with so many dancing girls and all this? What, what got into your head? Well, my aunt used to work at the Forge Theater. Mm -hmm. And she was a ticket seller. So every week or every week that the Blackstone was there, I was received some tickets. And uh, of course I was all in. He was my hero. And to this day, he's still my hero. And when he stopped, I remember seeing him at the large show, with the animals, and the people, and the illusions that seemed to die off. And I thought I would really like the children. Because I basically built this show for the children. I would like them to see the same show that I saw and be thrilled, or I wish, hope they would be happy anyway, to see what I saw. Because otherwise, as far as I knew, there wasn't that much going around as, as far as an illusion <coughs> show. And that's, that's why we did it, to try to make that generation and future generations. Well, I noticed on the uh, show tape in the beginning, it, seemed, it begins black and white. What, was that the idea you? was from uh, The Wizard of Oz, mm -hmm. because it seemed like if we did it all in black and white in the beginning, yeah. and then brought out the flourish of colors and so forth, then uh, that started the show. So. Did you buy used illusions? We did, but we made most everything. The one that you see on the DVD or whatever is made out of old wooden packing crate and two big hinges okay. that my friend and I made. We covered it with the... Uh, um, felt first, and then we used a, a shiny material to glisten it up a bit. And I thought, well, rather than just doing a normal tip-over box, we would put a piece of paper on the top of it so the girl could burst through. And uh, then we brought out the, the pigeons, I mean the, the chicken and the goat, and then the girl would come through after the yards of, of so. Now, you had a friend named Carol Bish. I don't know whether everyone would know that name, but you were very close to him. Carol Bish, I went to school with Carol Bish's son. I had no idea that Carol was, uh, I had no idea that uh, Donald Bish's father was a magician. But Donald Bish, uh, Donald Bish's father, later became almost a father to me. Uh, we were together constantly. If it were not for Carol, I would never have had the show. And people that are a little bit older would remember him as Ishkabish. And he was a dear, dear friend of Milburn Christopher and Hen Fetch. And as a matter of fact, Bish was older than the two of them, and they acted as assistants at some point. And through Bish, well, he built practically everything. He built the sawing. We built it together in his basement. The basement was probably 15 by 15 feet at the most, you know. And we would go down, and every night I'd go over there, right after work, basically, and stay there till 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And he was a perfectionist. He'd clean the table off first, get every piece of the equipment away. Then he'd say, all right, we're going to do this. And I need a board. 16 inches by 24 inches wide and one half inch thick and he'd get it all mapped out and I'd reach over on the floor and I'd say, will this do? And he'd say, you son of a gun! Every time that seemed to work because I'd just pick something up that he had. And uh, then he was the one that was instrumental in introducing me to Christopher. Now you had a very close friendship with Christopher. Did he influence you? He was one of the greatest influences of my life in magic. Absolutely. He was a kind man. He would share with anybody information. Uh, he would call up. He always would joke. He would call up 
at 11 o'clock at night and say, uh, hello, is, uh, uh, is there a band there that might want to talk about magic? I say, yeah, Chris, sure is. Well, you want me to come over there or you want to come over here? And we had, uh, you say, well, why don't you come over here? Or, and so I'd go over to his mom's house. And uh, then we actually made some costumes for him years ago. His mother and I, she had a seamstress, and uh, we did, made his black coat for him and his turban for him and the voodoo head that he used. But Bish was instrumental in introducing me to uh, Chris, and then we worked the shows with him. And it was just, we would spend hours and hours and hours together. Always very, very kind and very approachable. And when did you add the Gene Cattell dancers? Because that was a very large troupe. Well, the, uh, there was another magician named George Pate. And Gene used to have a, well, she still does, have her dance recital. And he came in to get a robe one time. He said, I'm going to do the Gene Cattell dancers recital. Would you come down and take a look at it? And I said, sure, he did a wonderful production. When I saw his production using the three girls and the sand, he did the color change from sand, the water to sand. And uh, when I saw that, I thought, wow, those girls dressed in those costumes, this is it. This is what we really need. And so later on, I mentioned to Gene, would you be interested in working in the show? And immediately it was, sure. I, didn't expect her to say sure, but the first show we did, I think I had 27 kids. Uh, one was a boy. <laughs> it was a massive show, but they were all in all her dance studio uh, children. But uh, then it worked out to, we, to the eight girls.